Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Our God is good. Amen. Our God is faithful. Amen. Church, we invite you to get to your feet with us. And like every Sunday, we invite you to help us fill the house of the Lord with prayer today. Thank you, Lord, for another day in your house, God. God, I thank you for this beautiful morning, and I thank you for the life that you have given us today, God. Lord, I ask that today you would open our hearts to receive from you this morning, that we would walk out of here blessed. I ask that you would fill this room with your presence, that you would fill every need in this room, and I ask that you would speak through those who are speaking today, that you would open our ears to hear from you, and that you would allow us to have a good service, and you would receive our worship in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Church, this morning I wanted to share out of the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 11. And the title of this chapter says, Boldly Face the Future. Do good wherever you go. After a while, the good you do will come back to you. Invest what you have in several different things. You don't know what bad things might happen on earth. There are some things you can be sure of. If clouds are full of rain, they will pour water on the earth. If a tree falls, to the south or to the north, then it will stay where it falls. But there are some things that you cannot be sure of. You must take a chance. If you wait for perfect weather, you will never plant your seeds. If you are afraid that every cloud will bring rain, you will never harvest your crops. You don't know where the wind blows, and you don't know how a baby grows in its mother's womb. In the same way, you don't know what God will do, and He makes everything happen. What a beautiful thing to hold on to. Amen, church. He makes everything happen. He is always with us. He never leaves us. We have a faithful friend. We have a savior. We have a redeemer. We have a perfect friend in God. Amen. And this morning, we invite you to hold on to that and remember and just remember how good God is to you and enjoy and have a wonderful time and worship with us today, church.
wonderful feeling to know that our Lord is always with us. Amen, church. Continue lifting your voices today. Continue praising his mighty name with us.
sitting over here, I'm sorry, it'll only be until after New Year's, when the tree goes down, we'll, we'll have your seats back over here. A lot of times we have our favorite seats we like to be at, they're like, oh, if I move from this place, God, I'm going to bless me, you this place here before. I promise you, wherever you sit, God's going to bless you. Amen. Okay, then, no. <laughs> wherever you sit, God's going to bless you anyway, yes? Amen. Yeah, Amen. that's what we came for. We came determined that the days are there. So many times we go to life and confront different circumstances that seem so impossible. And to some of you, you may be walking on that mile saying like, oh, I can't handle this anymore. I can't do this anymore. It's now that we need to really lighten up our lives and come to understand that for God, there's nothing impossible. We need to release our faith and allow God to work inside such a dynamic way that in spite of our deficiencies, and how many have deficiencies? Amen. How many have faults in their lives? Absolutely. So there's no excuse not to shut ourselves out and say, what's the use? There's no use to be able to to say, there's no future, there's no tomorrow. As long as there's God, there is a tomorrow. There's hope and expectation of God really is. So as I go through getting ready for the end of this year and getting a, a mindset to challenge all of us in life, to make us better believers, 
to make uh, Jesus' relationship more practical, more down to earth. And so many times people get so religious that they condemn themselves. Because when you practice a lot of religion, it's all about condemnation. I had an occasion this week to visit with a family. They heard me preach on the radio and they called me and I went and they're old school. They agreed with me. I said, you know, when I was growing up, I, I heard more messages about hell than about Jesus Christ. I mean, they beat me up with hell and all conviction and you're this, you're that, the other. They never fed me the good stuff. Never fed me the good stuff. But it's really based on God we're here. And I think it's the way we understand. They're up Walk with Jesus Christ is a daily walk with Jesus. I mean, understand that. Amen. It's a daily experience with Jesus Christ. Every day is different. Every moment is different. That's why we come here today to draw strength. That when we turn into the new week and we confront issues before us, then we understand greater see that is in me than he that is in the world, and we move forward. That's what it's all about. Releasing God within your life, allowing the Lord to be Lord over your life. And when He's Lord over your life, that means He owns you. And when he owns you, he makes the calls. And when you and when you obey his call, you're going to be blessed. It's when you do it your way and I do it my way that we get into trouble. And that's why we're here today. To talk about the issues that will straighten our lives out. And we understand that uh, God indeed does love us. He didn't come to condemn us. He came to save us. And we have an abundant life. So as I thought about, okay, what do we do? What can really relate to us if we can really understand how oh, I know what? How many remember when you were kids? You know, kids today, they don't have a life. You know, they don't have a life. Kids today, all they do is sit and play video games. They don't have a life. <coughs> when we were growing up, we invented games. You know that? Amen. We had football games with the peewee footballs. I mean, you did all kinds. Of, I mean, when we didn't have a ball, when we'd go to the ballpark and the little league park, see if they left a the ball behind. And if they didn't, we'd get some socks and black tape. And get a stick and let's play some baseball, man. Let's have a lot of fun. That was life. And I have great memories of stuff like that. But see, a lot of things that I did as a kid influenced my life today. You have no idea that you're growing up, things that you do that you call everyday occurrences are going to make you a better person or will destroy you on down the road. There's games that we play in life as a child that we have no idea we're going to be part of our decision making later on in life. See, because when you go through life, and you get to crossroads, and we do people. Constantly we run to crossroads, run to roadblocks. Things don't happen or things are happening and they're not going my way. And we have to make decisions. Those decisions have to be based as a believer in Jesus Christ and not to do it your way. Remember the old famous song, I did it my way. How many remember that song? All the heathens raise your hand. <laughs> I did it my way. Where did it take you? I did it my way. Because we are so controlling, we're so, so, so self-centered, I got this, I got this, I got this. Okay, God, you take a vacation, I got this. And while God's on vacation, you put God on vacation, you fall flat on your face. Yes. And then you have choices to make. Yes. When you fall flat on your face, and how many have fallen flat on their faces? Amen. Amen. When you have choices to make, you can run to God and get help, or run away from God and be destroyed. To run away from God is to lose your faith. To run away from God is when discouragement comes in, when doubts come in, when things don't go your way, and then you say, well, God, what happened to you? Oh, my God, what happened to you? I was trusting you, and I was praying, and I was sure it was going to happen, and it didn't happen. God, I asked you for this, and you didn't give it to me. And he would say, because you didn't need it. He said, I promise to meet your needs, not your wants. And so many times, our wants in life, do not coincide with our Christian walk. Amen. They don't blend. And I've told you countless times, I will tell you once again, God will never contribute to your downfall. He's never going to do this. So we need to understand that the things we have in life, the decisions we make in life, are going to determine our eternity. People. How many realize that you're walking closer to eternity than you ever thought? Yeah. The most insecure thing you have today as we sit here is your life. You're here today and you're gone tomorrow. Tomorrow I have a service. With a family, or a funeral service tomorrow with a, with a family because eternity came knocking into that family. It comes, it's a reality. You know that I've told you countless times I'm not a scare type pastor. Man. Oh, no, no, no. Because you need to enjoy your walk with Jesus Christ. You need to understand that when things are going good, thank God. And when your world's falling apart, thank you, Jesus, anyway. Amen. See, that's the mindset we have to go into. And instead of allowing uh, our mindset to carry us into these, these, these 
depression and saying, why, why did I do what was going on? Why don't we start based on the Lord Jesus Christ and come to understand that the one game I remember playing that has influenced my life later on, big in decisions I make in life, was that famous game called Hide and Go Seek. How many remember that game? How many used to like to play Hide and Go Seek? I love to play Hide and Go Seek at night. They couldn't find me. And you went out there, and what would you do? You'd say, I got my fears, so I'm gonna, I know I'm going to hide. And you look for a place hide, but they don't find me. Isn't that the deal? That they don't find me. And then you stay watching, and all of a sudden you're watching for the person that is it. And you stick your head out to look, and one wrong move, and you got you. In the game of life, I can go seek in the lives of people. When things are not right in our lives, our tendency is to run and hide. Our guilt, our assumption of wrong, does not lead us to the mind. It gives us the mindset, how can I justify this and get away with it? How can I say it's okay and get away with it? I'll let you know something. The Bible says that sin is sin, and the wages of sin is death. There's an end result. There really is an end result for all this. Well, Pastor, I've done this and that and that happened to happen to me. God's being very patient. Give me a chance to get your stuff together. Get your mind together and collect your thoughts. Because how is it that we think that we can run and hide from God? Remember when we're small and mom would always teach us about the Lord. And then that famous phrase. How many remember that text? It's called in the book of Mom, chapter 1, verse 1. And it says, Jesus knows. Isn't that that? Melty. Jesus knows. Once they hit you with that, you're in trouble. Because if Jesus knows, well, I'm in a mess of trouble. I better just confess it and get out in the open. And of course, my sister and I were very intelligent. And we come up with stuff like, if we run and hide under the bed, he's not going to see us. You know how many Christians are running under the bed? And you think he's not going to see them? We're so worried to hide from the people that surround us. And the only person you're hiding from is from yourself. The only one that's being fooled is you. Nobody else says. Because at the end, when it's all said and done, it's going to be you and God and nobody else. And the bottom line, you are so busy trying to hide yourself, you destroy your walk. You lost sight. You forgot all about it. So when I stopped to think about this game that a lot of people are playing, I thought about Psalm 139, verses 7 and 8. And he says, where do I go to hide from you? If I go to the heavens, you're there. Wherever I go, Psalm 139, 7, it says, I'm going to find you. If I go down, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find you there. Where can I go to hide from your spirit? And the answer is, you can't go anywhere to hide from God. It's not a guilt trip, people. It's a reality. It's a time to have a mind check, a heart check, and to be fair to yourself as eternity comes knocking at the door. It's so real. As you keep watching the news, you see how many more signs of the coming of Christ are coming your way. People, it's time to lighten up. Amen. And a lot of times I feel that people, as we walk, a lot of believers have been taken into the mindset and they're crying over what they don't have instead of thank God for what they do have. Oh, I wanted this and I didn't get it. Well, I'm this and I don't have it. And that and the other. Why are we crying for what you don't have? Why don't you thank God for what you do have? And then allow God to meet you in the end of the night. To be able to come to God. And I ask myself as I speak to you this topic. Why are you running? A lot of people, number one, are running because they have failed God in their walk. They know. I've told you many countless times. Sin is, you don't have to be very religious to understand what sin is. I've told you countless times. Common sense will tell you what's right and wrong. Ah, people, let's not play games with ourselves. Like, oh, I didn't know it was in the Bible. You know how many things that you think are in the Bible aren't there? And the things that aren't there are there? Because God didn't miss it. He's perfect. And you have, I want you to understand that the only thing that will separate you from God and eternal life and eternal blessing is your sin. The Bible says he loves a sinner. How many thank God for that? Amen. But he hates your sin. He hates your sin. 
Because see, sin is a voluntary action. It didn't just happen. Oh, wow, no. Because whether you like it or not, every time you sin and every time I sin, it's premeditated. We have to make a choice. Before we make the wrong choice, we have the option to opt out. But we felt, eh, it's all right. It's only one time. Oh, nobody knows anyway. And that's what I want to deal with you to understand. When we have knowledge of God and nobody turns to know, and we're striving to find the answers for our lives, and we know we fail. Come on, people, we know when we fail. We know when we fail. And we feel like, wow, ah, I messed up. Let me tell you who we come from. Let's study our DNA. Let's go back to the beginning. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve. The Bible says he made everything perfect. He said, you're the boss. You're in charge of all this. How many like to be the boss? Amen. How many know that in marriage the man has a final word? <laughs> yeah, it's yes, baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's the final word. Yeah. So see, we need to understand that he told everything in church. Except, and that's where we get into trouble. Every time it's except, that's what we want. If we're told no, we don't want to do it. It's like telling us, ha, ah, come on, come on. I dare you. I dare you. Remember when mom said, don't touch that, you wave her turn and go like that? Got it, got it. Ah, I touched it. See, ah, that's generic, but that's the game many people are playing today with God. He said no, and he said, eh, that's okay. And we got to understand this. Everything except, oh, check it out. Thank you for the tree. <laughs> Anything but, but that tree. Don't eat from that tree. And so, here's the problem, people. As you go to life, you can be experiencing the biggest relationship with God, but how many know that the devil is not going to be happy? Amen. He's going to come out and make door. And the more you entertain a conversation with him, the more chances are that he's going to beat you. He's not going to think he's going to take you down with one blow. He'll work on you. He'll keep coming back and back. And you say, oh, no, 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 no. And then when he said, well, that didn't seem so bad. So he was taking her cruise and the snake, the serpent, the devil. They didn't have a conversation. Hmm. So she didn't can't beat up any. Oh, no, no, no. See, because this is what it works. The enemy works with half truths. How many know people work that way? When one get their way. Half truths. They introduce the truth and then they bring the lie tied in to make it look good. Oh, so he said, and he used half truths. No, no. And kudos to Eve. She defended God. No, no, that's not what he said. That's not what it was all about. It was answer. See, the more you talk to him, the more chances you have to go down. Let me tell you something. You don't have to tell him anything. He's already defeated. Amen. And you're wasting your time if you think you're going to beat him. You can't outdo him. You can't outtalk him. The only one that has that power is the power of the blood of Jesus and Jesus Christ within your life. And unless you stay there, you're going down. Because he'll make it look good. So the Bible said that he looked and she liked what she saw. Now how many know that when you like something, you go after it? How many already looked at the stores which you want for Christmas? <laughs> yeah. When you like something, you go after it. The Bible says she looked and she saw it and she liked it. And she took the fruit and ate it. Immediately her eyes were open. And now innocence is gone. Now we've gone into sin. And he gives, she gives it to her husband. We're not going to argue, people. We're not going to argue because the word is yes, man. Have a bite. Yes, man. And now he goes down. And now they see that innocence is gone and they're naked. Guilt. They failed. What's the first thing they do? Verse number eight says that they ran and they hid among the trees. They wanted to hide from God because they knew God had a daily walk with them and talked every day. So they knew. Immediately they knew we got to do something. So they ran and they hid among the trees. I got this recovered. You know, I'm going to find you. We've never been here before. We, we got this. And they covered themselves. And here comes God. Adam. Adam. 
the one in the Bible, not our music director. I'm over here. Adam, Adam, where are you? He's like, oh, shh. Adam, where are you? Well, the Lord, it's that I heard uh, your voice in the, in the garden, and I got afraid because I saw that I was naked. Really? And who told you you were naked? Here we go, people. We always try to blame somebody for our mistakes. It's always somebody told me, somebody influenced me, somebody encouraged me. Come on, people, this reality. And when he thought about it, I think I haven't thought of it before I answer this. I only have, there's only one woman, and that's her. And I don't need to fight with her. I need to keep her happy. Happy wife, happy. Life. Gentlemen, happy. Life. Thank you. I'm going to keep her happy. Do you know what he does? You know what he told God? The woman you gave me. See, I didn't pick her. I didn't go shopping. I didn't have my list of conditions of what she needs to look like. It didn't work anyway. Come on, guys. Oh, when I get married, he's going to be tall, dark, and handsome. He ends up short, white, and fat. <laughs> love is love, man. Love is blind, right? He says, no, no. The woman that you gave me, and people, how many are trying to justify their lives and their sin blaming God? Because God, when I needed you, you weren't there. God, when I needed you and asked for help, I didn't get what I wanted. Come on, people, it's true. That's how it comes into play. That's how we try to justify. That's how we make it look right in our minds that we believe this makes things right. No, it doesn't. It doesn't make things right. People, as you go to life, understand one thing. We are responsible we own our sin, and nobody can pay for our sin. We have to pay for our own. Let me tell you something about sin and forgiveness. In life, you can mess up in life, and people will not forgive you. Amen? How many know that? How many have, you know, people say, forget, you're gone, man. I'm nothing with you. You know what it is with God? It doesn't matter what you've done. He still loves you. I want to tell you something. Don't carry your sin anymore. Don't defeat the purpose of your life. So we made a mistake. Don't be ashamed to call it out and call it and confess it. For the things we confess to God, he will forget. Don't go to God saying, well, God, you know everything. Oh, good guess. That's a good one. Yes, I do know everything. But what is it that you need? It's like you're going to a grocery store and you need sugar. You walk in there, huh, I need a... Uh, 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 what do you need? Go get it. And God said, whatever is wrong in your life, confess it. <laughs> Accept it. Own it. Cast it out. Destroy it. And be a man and a woman in the eyes of God. Be the person I called you to be. How many know that God wants to bless you? Right. How many know that God wants to bless you? Yes. And you are holding God's blessing away by doing things your way. By justifying the decisions you made that furthered your relationship from God, that cooled your mindset from God, that destroyed your faith and you want to call it for the sake of this message, you, you lost faith in religion. Don't lose faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe the Lord with all your heart and regard it. Don't let the enemy deceive you saying, oh no, it's too bad now. God's not going to understand. God doesn't love you. He said the first word he said from Calvary when he died for you and I, he said, Father, what? Forgive them, for they know not what they do. That today, I think the first thing we need to do as believers, we need to quit hiding from God and come into His presence and ask for forgiveness. Clean the slate. Get started over again. You know that I've been in church for 10 years. Yeah, but you need to make it right today. Because the relationship with God is a today thing. It's not something, it's a today thing. You've got to make sure everything is right. And the greatest thing of all is that through this message, God's opening a door to all believers to say, you know what? So you messed it up. I don't condone sin. I don't agree with your sin, but I will forgive your sin. And that's the kind of God I need in my life. Amen. People don't play with God. Don't think, oh well, oh well. No, don't play with God. 
because God will not be deceived or played with. Whatever man sows that will he will he also reap. You are owner of your own decisions. Whatever you've done and decided belongs to you and nobody else. It affects people around you, but it only destroys your life. Quit hiding from God. Quit trying to think, oh well, someday I'll take care of it. No, I'll take care of it today. Make sure that gets out of your life so you can have peace. We have joy and understanding. You can walk to the most difficult time in your life and still be blessed. Why? Because you put aside everything that was separated from God. You destroyed everything the weapons the enemy has against you because the only thing the enemy has on you is sin. And you can get away from that and find the grace of God, then you got it made because the wages of sin is going to be death. But believing in Jesus Christ, we don't talk about death, we talk about life in the Lord Jesus Christ. Do yourself a favor. Be blessed. Ask God for forgiveness. And God is patient and loving and understanding. How many of you are that? Amen. Second thing why people run from God is when God asks you to do something for someone that you don't like. Hmm. Mm -hmm. How, how many have people in your circle and they're just outside your circle because they did or said something? How many have? Yes. <laughs> and all of a sudden God says, help them. What are you doing? Ah, mm, ah, mm. You know what they said about me? You know what they did to me? Oh, and heaven for sake they do it to your kids. There are no forgiveness for that. Whatever they do to your kids, your grandkids, oh no, there's no forgiveness for that. And then God says, help them. And you say, ah. I'll tell you a little story. It's in the Bible. A man named Jonah. Who's speaking to God. Man of God. Wants to serve God all in his heart. God, what can I do? And God says, I want you to go to Nineveh. I want you to go preach them. They repent because they don't know how to destroy them. Mm, anything else? My pastor, if I was in a mindset, Nineveh was the enemy. All right, and according to what some commentaries I read, and he was a statement, part of the government also, the owner was involved, so he's going to the enemy's camp to help him out. Isn't the mindset to say, hmm, maybe if they don't repent, you're going to destroy him? Well, guess what? Destroy him. You're an enemy. They've done this and that and that and that to us, and they deserve to die. I mean, that's easy way it got me you wrong. Know? And then the other thing was this. Who knew? Who knew that God had told Jonah to go to Nineveh? Nobody, right? It's like, nobody knows but you what God has asked you to do. Nobody knows. It's a conversation between you and God. You said, I want to be faithful. I want to be a servant. I'll be a Christian. What do we have to do, God? Only you and God knows what happened there. And Jonah thought the same. And the Bible says in Jonah chapter 1, verse number 3, he decided, I'm going to leave. Because nobody knows anyway. I'm out of here. She takes off, buys himself a ticket to go the opposite direction. Gets on the boat. Got it. I'm away from God. I'm hid from God. Anyway, he's my enemy. And we need him destroyed. So he goes. And he does a good thing. I been on this ship only a couple of times and believe me, I'm better off in my car. <coughs> you know? And he goes to the bottom, finds a little cop out there, kind of kicks back. Got this. Life goes on. Nobody knows. And they sit up. This storm comes up like devastating storm comes up and I even the sailor, oh my, oh, 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 there's a, what's going on, what's going on? They're trying to find out what's going on, who's to blame, what's happened. It was so devastating, the storm. I looked among all of them and said, hey, we got one down there. Call him up. And I think maybe Jonah was really good with a ship on this. He's probably rocking this and trying to believe that. He says, hey, come on up. This is, this is happening up. And then he says, it's my fault. It's my fault. So what he do, he says, Casting me off the boat. You think they thought about it twice? You think they thought about like, 
Oh, poor guy. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Can you just come out? Thank you, picture. Might you see one hand, the other hand, one with your hand. <laughs> Got it. Strong comes down. The goldfish goes, mm, thank you for lunch. And they go join him to the bottom. And from there, he calls out to God. I told you to do something. You don't want to do it. So he said, come on. Give me another chance. You think you can hide from God? You think you can run and hide from God? Jonah thought he could. And he had every reason. He had every justified reason. Because it's the enemy that I'm supposed to help. He had every, in the mindset, in the flesh, he had every justified reason to do what he did. But in the spirit, we got to obey what God says. God has a purpose. And God has a messenger. And God has something for you to do. He says, God, give me an opportunity. So, the Lord sent big fish at the end, and he vomited him out. I heard a comedian say one time, Christian comedian, talk about that. He said, you imagine? He comes out with seaweed, all kind of junk all over him, and he's saying, repent! Of course I'm going to repent. They're freaking scared. Look at the man. Repent, 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 repent. He went and preached to Nineveh, and they were scared. They repented and came to God. And he thought he could hide from God. There's people that need our blessing. People who need to get our guard down a little bit. And be believers in Jesus Christ. To make a difference in the lives of people. If you can be there, why not? Pastor, if you only knew. I really don't want to know. I'm the type of person that if you don't tell me, I don't ask. If you come and say, we got this need, could you help us? I won't ask unless they tell me. And when they tell me, I won't investigate any further because we're not going to change it anyway. If they come because they need help, then I can do what I can do. I know what to do my thing. I'll do my thing. I don't need to have all the details because I can't change it anyway. It makes you feel better. Okay, I'll listen to you. But the bottom line is this that we have a mindset and a heart and be the visible and tangible expression of God's love and forgiveness and help. Because after all, the day you found Jesus, the Bible says no longer I live, but Christ lives within me. And the only Jesus the world is going to see is the Jesus they see in you and me. So what kind of Jesus are they seeing? Have you been there for? Would you stand there and extend your hand? Even when they've walked away from you. Even when they know, when you know they've talked about you. Are we so big into, into us that we can understand that we can be a blessing to people? As a pastor of a church, I run into that a lot. To understand and try to make a difference in the lives of people. And how many know that a pastor can make everybody happy all the time? Maybe especially if I have to be at three places at one time, it's kind of hard. There's enough of me for three places, but I can only be at one place at a time. But to be able to understand that if we were sent here to make a difference, then it's time to make a difference. It's time to be the person God called us to be. And not to say, yes, God, but not over there. Yes, God, but not over there. Yes, God, not with him, not with her. Believe me. When I'm out to help people, I don't care who you, where, who you are, where you come, and what you've done. But once I put my eye on you, I'm me, I'm going to be your pain. Okay. I'm going to be there. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to quit. As I said to one gentleman one time, his parents were the first members of this church when I started. He went to Vietnam and came back actually an animal as far as human relationships. He walked into a bar and began to fight him out the bar, beat up everybody. The kind of person he was. I ran into him and he really was. I saw him one day, San Jacinto, remember San Jacinto and the Coney Island. I don't remember Coney Island. Yes, yes, yes. Well, and I saw him walking to that bar next. I saw him walking in. I didn't walk in with him. I walked in behind him. He knew what I was. What are you doing here? 
I can even talk to you. Do we talk here? We'll talk outside. I don't care. Let's talk. Oh, wait from the outside. I'll be there. Okay. I'll be outside. We start to have several meetings. I kept talking about them. You know what I've done? It doesn't matter. That looks. Oh, but I'm the shame of the family. They said I'm the black sheep, all this kind of stuff. But don't worry about it. God still loves you. Mm-hmm. Went over and over and over. He says, why do you care? He says, why do you care? I said, because if Jesus loves you, I love you too. And keep looking over your shoulder because I'm coming. <coughs> and the last thing I will do for you is bury you. And once that day happens, I can do nothing more. I'm done. There's nothing else I can do for you. Once I do that. But until that day comes, look for me because I'm coming. Sometimes went by and I didn't see him for a while. They get a phone call and he says, yeah, pastor, yeah. Just to let you know that my son was drunk like always. We lived in Phoenix, down into the canal, the big canal around there, and he drowned. He did, just you know. When's the funeral? No, no, you don't have to come. No, no. I told him the last thing I would do is bury him. I'm coming. You tell me when it is, and I'll fly I'm flying to, to Phoenix to be there. Because I made him a promise. And when a man makes a promise, he has to keep that promise. And I went. And it was so sad that a man that was turned into an animal because the wars and everything got into the, the drug and all that kind of stuff with his life. It's sad. That he was willing to put his life out in Vietnam. And at his funeral, it was his father, his mother, his brother, film director, and me. That was it. We were the pole bears. We were everything there. I could do no more. And see, this should be your mindset. Do for people while they're alive, when they can appreciate it. And you might be, they might think you're a pain, but a lot of times, in order to cure the pain, you're gonna find the solution. When you're hurting, you run to a doctor and get medication. When you're a sin, you run to Jesus and find the answer. I give you Jesus. I challenge your life. That instead of trying to run to hide from what God has asked you to do, you open a whole new mindset in your life and watch God bless your life with his best. It's not easy, I know. It's not easy to do this, but it's scriptural. You don't have to hide from God. And when God asks you to do something, it's because he believes you can do it. He's not going to ask you to do something you can't do. He's not going to embarrass you. He's not going to put you in an impossible position. You can be somebody's blessing or you can destroy your future. And your blessing by saying, ah, but not that. No. If God asks you to do it, have faith. You can do it. Third and last thing, why people run from God is when things of your life threaten your existence. When your life said it's kind of shaken and moved. When everything is always there, there's all of a sudden challenged about things around your life. And I shared this a couple of weeks ago with you, when Elijah had this confrontation with the prophets of Baal. And he went to Mount Carmel, and he told prophets of Baal, and told everybody, the nation's government, everybody show up, we're gonna have a big old demonstration of who the real God really is. We're gonna make an altar, and the God that answers in prayer, fire, he is the real God. Got this, got this. I do it then. And the mindset of people, that was so dumb. The whole nation of Israel, all the prophets of Baal, everybody outnumbered him by a huge amount. And the physical eye, it's Elijah by himself. To a spiritual mind, if you could see what Elijah could see, thousands of angels standing behind him. We're bigger than you. There's only one of me. But you don't know who I really am. You have no idea where my connection is at. And people, there's only one of you, and you know who your God is. I mean, who your God is. It's not time to give up or to say, no, 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 no. It's time to understand who you are. You're not just anybody. You're going into this confrontation, this issue, knowing that God's in control. So as this thing develops, he told me, you guys go first, they're doing their thing. He's not saying, oh my God, you better answer God, God, you have mercy. He's not doing that. 
He's kicking back, watching the whole center, enjoying it. Like, really? He even thought, come on, you screamed him. Maybe your God's asleep. Wake him up. He's having a great time watching this. He said, okay, we didn't know, but you haven't done it either. Your turn. The first thing the Bible says, he told the people, come <clears throat> close. Which means what? The people have walked away from God. In order for me to do this, I want to show you something, but get close with me, a good view of what's going to happen here. Makes the altar, puts a sacrifice, dumps water in abundance. There's a little ditch around the thing, filled with water, and he says, okay, God, let's show the sheep who we are. I'm paraphrasing this to make it quick. Boom! Light from heaven, boom, the whole the whole thing that's consumed is like, oh, tremendous power, tremendous miracle from God. People say Jehovah is God. They turn the bed and they kill all the prophets of me. All right, great victory. Not yet. Yet that moment he was in great victory. But when Jezebel found out what he had done to her prophets, she said, at this time tomorrow, I will kill you. I'm going to kill you for what you've done. And the Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse number 2, he says that Elijah ran to save his life. Elijah, where are you going? The victory happened here. You're standing on victory. You're standing on power. You're standing on authority. This is where God manifested himself. And you're running? How are you running? Why did you stand there? What scared you? They're going to kill me. i got to run for my life. And there's people blessed of God that have stood in promise of God, have been blessed of God, received powerful things from God. And when that moment came to your life, when I get a different thing to have to come against you, instead of staying where you need to stay and hold on to your roots in Jesus Christ, you're running looking for help. You're going to be where can I get help? Why I get help? People, you were there already. You were already there. God had already blessed you. God has shown you He was with you. God said, I will never leave you or forsake you. But for once, whatever happened, it was easier to run because I in my life I gotta take care of myself. No longer I live, but Christ lives within me. I challenge you to come back to the place of victory. Don't run from God, run to God. Don't be alone in life. Don't allow anything that is happening in your life to destroy your faith. Don't allow circumstances that are difficult. Because I understand, I've said this before, there's things in our life that just don't make sense. Things that don't have explanations. I've had to do that with several people. Sit and say, there's nothing to say. There is no answer. All we need is God's strength. As we go forward to be with us, to enlighten us, to strengthen us, and eventually we will understand. I don't ask you to understand now I ask you to stand on the promises of God and to believe in God and give God an opportunity to heal that wound in your life. Allow God to be the Lord of your life. And instead of running, trying to find a different answer, why don't you run to Jesus? Why don't you give him a chance? You've done it your way. And look at the mess your life is in. Because you were right where you needed to be and you got scared and ran. If you keep reading that incident, God appears to him in the case says, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? And God says to you, what are you doing? Why have you run? Haven't I promised to be with you? Haven't I been faithful to you? Haven't I loved you? But you shut yourself in. We're allowed to be challenged, and instead of staying your ground, holding on to your roots, and let the storm winds blow, you need, you ran thinking there was an answer somewhere else. The answer is Jesus. Amen. Quit running. Quit running. Quit hiding. God loves you. He believes us. And I 
told me the greatest thing I love about my God is this. And my mindset and my heart is eliminated from the vocabulary of the phrase, I told you so. Because we already know. We don't need, we don't need to be told. And ask, so where do you stand today? In your walk with God, in the second that surrounding your life, the issues that are before you that seem like, is there going to be an answer? The answer is Jesus. You got to weather the storm. You got to dig in and hold him. The storms will come. And like the palm tree, your life will bend, but it will not break because God is with you. I promise you. For you that are running and hiding, because you think this is the right thing to do. Believe me, you're only fooling yourself, nobody else. Because when it's all said and done, the only one that will pay the price is you. Nobody else is going to pay the price. You're going to pay the price when it's all said and done. So can you just stand before the mirror of God and be honest with yourself and say, you know what, Pastor? Yeah, I need that. I've been running. I've been hiding. I thought to my way. But no, it's time to say to my way, get the highway. Because I'm going to stand on the rock who is Jesus Christ. I offer you Jesus. The strength, the companionship, his love, his forgiveness, his understanding. Be at peace. And let me use that famous Christmas song. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with you. You need peace this morning. You need God's help this morning? I give you Jesus. So this morning, you know this is yours. Yeah, some of you are already standing up. You know this is yours this morning. I want you to stand and say, Jesus, it's me. It's me. This was about me. This message was about me and the needs that I have in my walk. Now I need that word to understand. I can't hide from you. I can't hide from you. I will not hide from you. I will be totally exposed to you. That today you might just come with the cleansing blood of Jesus. Restore my faith, my walk, my relationship with you. It's time to be for real. It's time to set the course for your eternity and say, God, use me. If that's you, put stand, stand with me. We're going to pray together. That God is such a special way we'll take this message. And translate it into your life. You two might know today that you're not gonna you're not gonna hide from God. You're not. You're not. Don't fool yourself. You be blessed. Heavenly Father, we stand in your presence. Having delivered your word in the challenge. I believe these things were said today needed to be said. That we're gonna be honest with ourselves. Come to terms with who we are. Come before your presence. Acknowledge your love, your understanding, your forgiveness. Not to challenge the things of life, but to help you for help. Ask you for help, for direction, for strength as we go through trying times. Today, Lord, I have delivered from my heart you placed to challenge those that are here and are watching at home or will watch later today. It's time, Lord, to restore our faith. It's time to come out in the open and find you in a relationship. Accept our deficiencies and our faults. Do our best, Lord, to beat them and to be able to have a blessed life in you. I understand now that my eternity is based on the choices that I make. And I have to make good choices. And if you be with me, I'll be blessed. So, Father, I stand before you, first of all, to ask you for forgiveness of sin. I know, God, that it's a deterrent. I know that it's the one thing that will stop me from my blessings. I ask you, Lord, for your mercy, for your forgiveness. I thank you for your patience that allowed me to get to this moment in my life. I can be honest with myself and deal with the issues that only you and I know about our lives. 
be open enough to confess it, to ask for forgiveness, and be cleansed immediately by the blood of Jesus Christ. Restore my fellowship with you to the cleansing of my heart, of my mind, of my emotions, to be put upon the rock with Jesus Christ. And what God knows, it doesn't matter what happens. Me and God, we got together today. Give us your kind of heart. Heart of compassion, a love of understanding to help those who are in need. But when you ask us to do something, we not be afraid to take a step of faith. If you ask us, it means, it means you could drive the road anyway. They you already said the format of how we're going to be able to help and we're going to be received. And that's what we need to trust. And put aside all physical emotions and restore into our minds the mindset of being an extended hand of you to the people that surround us. And then give them our best. And the best we have to offer is Jesus. Always. To be that visible and tangible expression of your love. And to those that feel threatened, that at one time stood in victory, stood in the place where God could bless them and did bless them. But for some unexplained reason, things have come into their lives, issues have challenged them, and instead of staying where the victory was at, they ran looking for answers. And today we come back to the answer. The answer is you. For the Bible teaches me you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the Jesus that brought me victory back then will bring me victory this morning. I stand on the promises of God. I come back to you, the source of blessing. Be going to walk my walk according to what you want. And I thank you beforehand because I know you're hearing my prayer. Thank you, God, for your love. Thank you for your word. This wake up call to our lives to see ourselves as you see us, that we might be blessed. I pray, Holy Father, bless to every life. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin. We ask it in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Take a moment just to enjoy. Tell them why you're standing. Tell them why you're standing. Call it by its name, his earth, whatever, whatever, as you stand. Take it to God right now. Place it into his hands and trust him. And to those that believe, all things are possible. For those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. Years. Walk out of here refined, rebuilt, re energized. And later, David gets to somebody, man, today I spent some time with God. I had a moment with God. Run to Him, not from Him.
talk to you. We're starting out. A new month, and this is it, people. One more month left. In the month of, in the month of December and this year. Uh, let me remind you a couple of things. Well, first of all, this advances over it. Need a time to know Lift your hand, Mark will come and gladly give you a time to know To help us meet our commitments here. We are for him to honor our hands, like everything that we to make this thing happen. So raise your hand. And Thank you, sir, Robert. We're, we're giving you time to know. Uh, it's Christmas time here at the church, and we have two things that we do every year. We're going to ask for cooperation also. Number one, I, I, I need to, does anybody have a friend that's a dentist? Yeah, uh, gotta be a friend. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask him for donations. Can pull out whatever it is you need. No, no, that's not the point. <coughs> You're missing the point. You're going to give all this candy to the kids. You know, I'm going to get into business. You should show by the candy, right? <laughs> Every year we all have donations of candies. Or candy bags we get the kids on the service of the 24th. We need either candies or money. Either one. And we'll do that up until the 17th. We'll have up to the 17th to do it because then the next Sunday is already the 24th. And just so you can make your plans for for the 24th, we will have two services on the 24th. We'll have the English service. The English will have the kids program and all the, all the children's ministry. All that's going to be in the, in the English service. And the candy bag life is going to be in the English service. The Spanish, we're going to preach a Christmas message to them. All right, and then whatever candy you guys leave, then we'll uh, we'll give it to them if you leave anything. No, we'll do it then. The other thing is that every year when we put up our Christmas tree, your gift to the church that will be done for years now. We just need like cleaning supplies, trash bags, uh, or we'll medium or large trash bags, and uh, all the clean stuff. Toilet paper and uh, the rolls of paper towels. Thank you. Everything has to do with cleaning. Some of also, whatever. We put it there, and that pretty much gets us for the whole year. Every year, people bring enough that we have for the whole year to cover the whole year. So, if you want to give a gift to the church, the tree is there. Just put your bring it underneath the tree. All right, and then. Uh, I'm trying to understand sign language. But how many understand that an Indian from Islera does not understand the sign language of a ranger? Because <laughs> she's not Indian. Her be ranger. <laughs> and could be dangerous. <laughs> so, but we just ask you to be open about helping us. You know, bring in your contribution for the candies or money either way. If you give us the money, we'll go buy the candies. And we continue to pray that God will restore faith in many others. Bring them back to church. We need them. They need them. Yeah. Oh, and Jake has an announcement about the kids and the candy or what? The kids. Okay. All right, cool. So really quick, guys. Um, so last month, we, as a youth art group, we went to the Rhinos. We went to go hang out. We had about 25 kids show up, which is great. We're back, right? We're starting up again. So this month on the 17th, it is a Sunday. Um, we're going to make it easy for you guys. So parents can have a date night. We're going to have an evening for the kids. We're going to be meeting here at 530 to leave by 6. We're going to take them to go look at the lights. Not the lights at downtown, the ones that we drive through. Um, all we're asking is drop them off so they can have a good time. Um, we'll take them to go look at the lights. We'll bring them back here. We'll feed them. We'll have a game night. We'll have uh, music for them. We'll have everything set up. All we need you to do is drop them off. If anybody makes some mean chile con queso, we're happy to have donations too for the food after, but um, not mandatory. We, we just want the kids to show up. If they have friends and, and they don't have a ride, let us know. We'll go pick them up. If they have cousins that can't make it, let us know. We'll go pick them up. Um, usually it's... Um, 
we ask you to just let us know so we make sure we have enough food. Definitely let us know if you're going to bring someone extra because we need to make sure we have enough space in the cars. So if I got to borrow my mom's car, I can borrow my mom's car and then the minivan and get people going because we are not, we're not going to charge you guys anything. We were going to take care of everything for you guys. So if you want to bring a friend, you want to bring a cousin, a family member, uh, you want to bring a little sister, a little brother, that's cool too. We're happy to have everybody. That way you parents can have a great date night and we can have a great uh, youth night for the kids. We appreciate it. So December 17th, the Sunday, meet here at 5.30 so we can leave by 6. If you're running late, just call us. We'll wait for you, I promise. Cool. Yeah, it's not a big date now. I'm going to take my date to go see the lights. They're going to go see the lights. They're going to go see the lights. As you can tell, I'm not. It's okay. But thank you guys for making that possible for us. <laughs> Happy wife. Happy Love life. life. <laughs> Look all the single kids here. <laughs> <laughs> We're learning. That's a good thing about this church, people. We're down to earth. We're family. And I love it that way. I thank God. I mean, God opens different avenues for me to minister. And what I, people have often told me that the gifts God has for me is funerals. To be able to do funerals for people and be there and speak with them. It won't be God gives me. And I've been through a lot of them. And the greatest blessing for me that I can ever do is to honor me by coming to church. Ladies, thank you for being here this morning. I appreciate you. Because they said, there's nothing like coming home and getting it from the man we knew when we were kids also. Welcome home. This is home. Welcome to the most home. I think we're ready to go. All right, this stand is straight, receive our tithes and offerings, and then those are animals.